I'm continuing my video series on the Grand Canyon. This is part 3, the final part. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos, the links are in the description. I recommend watching them all, to get the full picture. I hope you don't get bored. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Visiting Sedona in 2022, I had the distinct sense the place had seen a lot of melting weaponry. The rocks looked like they used to be towers. Well atop the Bell Rock Vortex, I saw a perfectly straight line cut through the rock, for about half a mile, no doubt laser cut. I followed it for some time before I lost interest. I didn't take a picture because I had left equipment and phone in the hotel that day. The landscape around the canyons are fertile green. On the roads of Arizona, I was often surprised at how quickly things went from barren redlands to green hills and trees. To me, the canyons are not natural features, they are the result of deliberate destruction. Mid to northern Arizona, is a treasure trove of ancient anomalies. This crater for example. Highways are built as perfectly straight lines for hundreds of miles, along more ancient straight lines. I believe, this is done to camouflage the fact of perfectly straight ancient lines. A close-up reveals other older lines beside the highway. And this image reveals even older lines, slightly offset behind and beside the old lines. We learn more about Tontontiac by looking at Totonac culture. The academics make no connection between Tontontiac and Totonac, but there is one. Actually, academics don't acknowledge Tontontiac even existed in the first place. Tontontiac is Tontontiac, an ancient German phrase. Remove the T, and you're left with Tonac. The word ack or ack is ancient German for earth and land. From it, we get the modern word acre and the modern German word for field or land, acker. Tun means sound. Tuntiak means sound of the earth. On the Wikipedia page for the Totonac, we read. According to the dictionary of the Nahuatl or Mexican language, the term Totonaca is the plural of Totonacatl and refers to the inhabitants of the province of Totonacapan. Some authors have pointed out that the term Totonaco means man of hot earth. In the Totonac language, this word is compassed by the terms Tutu or Akatutu, referring to the number three, and Aku, meaning heart. The Totonacs use this term in the sense that Sampola, Tajan and the Castillo de Tio are the three representative centers of the group. The Nahuatl dictionary got the last part right, earth. Nahuatl is itself an ancient German word, Naatl, near the water. This is a pyramid of the Totonac, in poor condition. Another one. One blatant sign you are being lied to about history is, how academia, whoever they are, allows for a thriving pyramid-building culture all over Mexico, but none just across the border in the US, where traces of this grand culture suddenly disappear. The kingdoms of America crossed seamlessly into the kingdoms of Mexico, because these countries did not exist as two separate entities in those days. Why do we acknowledge the kingdoms of Mexico but not those of Arizona, right across the border? Maybe it's because Mexico doesn't have the Smithsonian Institute which criminally looted and erased any trace of the ancients. Or it's because some of the structures in Mexico are still intact and therefore undeniable. This is a 1524 map of the famous Tenochtitlan, the biggest pyramid city in Mexico. This is what remains of it, the center square on the map. Why am I showing you this? So that you see how enormous these cities were. This is only a small part of the overall city, the centerpiece. Why is it so hard for academics to understand that these places really existed, when we have evidence of them so close to home? They tell us Tontontiac did not exist. Then why is it mentioned in texts that don't even directly relate to Tontontiac? A 1628 text called The Anatomy of Melancholy, casually mentions the place. Let me guess. The people erasing history overlook this kind of stuff, because it doesn't directly relate to what they are trying to erase, so they don't bother looking there. A 1664 book written in Latin called Geographus Generalis, casually listed, along with other known and really existing places. These are Totonac performing a ritual called Danza de Volators, or Dance of the Flyers. It reminds me of the carousel-type rituals among other indigenous people around the world, proving a common link across continents. This is the Grand Canyon from a Google Maps drawn image. It's an S-shape, topped by a lake. This is the seven cities of ancient legend. 
they are an S-shape, topped by a lake. According to the online World History Encyclopedia, the seven cities of Cibola are the mythical lands of gold that the Spanish of the 16th century believed existed somewhere in the southwest of North America, comparable to the better known mythical city of El Dorado. The cities were first attested to by four survivors of the disastrous Narvaez expedition of 1527, including the explorer Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca, in 1536. De Vaca's report was later corroborated by the Franciscan friar Marcos Deniza in 1539. There were seven very large cities, which were all subject to one lord. In them, were large houses of stone and mortar, the smallest of which were one story high with a terrace, and there were besides two and three story buildings. The chief's house was of four stories. There were many decorations at the entrance of the principal houses and turquoises, which were very plentiful in the country. The people of these cities were very well clothed. He wrote of huge pearls and emeralds, and he said that the people ate off of gold and silver plates. He also claimed that the seven cities of Cibola were equal in population to Mexico City. Some maps from the late 1600s still show Cibola. Its location is precisely in the area of today's Grand Canyon. I have reason to believe the seven cities were already turned into a post-apocalyptic crater landscape by the 1600s, and the mapmaker was going off earlier maps, or calling the region itself after what it used to be called, Cibola. The science informs us that Grand Canyon was formed billions of years ago. I forget how many billions. Is there anyone who actually cares whether it was 10 billion or 100 billion years ago? These numbers are put out there, so that people stop giving a damn. They're made up numbers. This type of science needs to be defended. Another department of the science, the history department, claims that the canyon was first sighted in 1540 by Captain Garcia Lopez de Cardenas, accompanied by Hopi guides and Spanish soldiers. After that, nobody saw, witnessed, heard of, or set foot in the Grand Canyon for 237 years. Then, the second time it was viewed was in 1776. And after that, many people viewed it. Who comes up with such nonsense? The maps and stories of the 1500 to 1700s imply continual activity across North America. Anyone telling you that nobody sighted the Grand Canyon for more than 200 years is clearly lying. My guess is that they invented the story of some Spanish exploring the canyon in 1540. Hundreds of mapmakers contradict that story. The Grand Canyon didn't exist in the early and mid-1500s. It was created sometime between 1580 and 1650, and now stands as a reminder of lost golden kingdoms and the wars of ancient kings and queens. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.